There's also increasing reports of organizations rolling back some of the benefits that they've given to employees over the last year or two years as they've sought to get turnover under control. And so family-friendly work policies, you see lots of rolling back of flexible work policies, some uh, at large organizations that make the headlines um, on, on a weekly basis. And I think it's important for organizational leaders to realize, like, it's perfectly fine to roll back benefits if it's really a business necessity to do that. But that needs to be clearly communicated to employees. And what we're seeing a lot of is just benefits, um, compensation being rolled back, flexible working being rolled back without a whole lot of an explanation. And that's a recipe for disaster because individuals view this as an unfair situation. If they've had flexible working for two or three years and their productivity has stayed where it was when working in person, and then that benefit goes away, they view that as a loss. And in fact, uh, there, there's an economist named Nick Bloom at Stanford who's quantified like remote working. And, and he's found that remote working, uh, workers value that the same as they value a 6% pay raise. And so that means a couple of things. Partly what it means over the last few years is there's been this divide between in-person workers and maybe white collar or professional workers who have been able to work from home. Um, essentially, the remote working boom gave a number of people who were able to work remotely the equivalent of a 6% raise while leaving in-person workers behind. And so there's, there's a bit of unfairness there. And now as organizations start to start to roll back, start to tighten uh, their remote work policies. This is just one example. Um, workers may view that as a pay decrease. And while um, as organizational psychologists, we, ha we haven't really studied yet what happens when you start to take away flexible working policies. We have studied what happens if you reduce employees' pay and you don't give them a good explanation for it. And this is where the retaliatory nature comes in. If employees feel like their pay is reduced unfairly, you will see your company theft numbers or shrinkage numbers go up. As individuals, all of us are pretty good at finding ways to balance the scales if we feel like we're being treated unfairly. And so, I think this is uh, a bit of a, a dangerous situation. And, and this is especially true when it comes to quitting. So so just as an aside, I mean, so, so again, my area of research is, is how employees quit their jobs. Do they quit in really positive ways uh, by giving lots of notice and, and maybe training their replacement and, and staying on call when they leave? Or do they give no notice and they just walk off the job or else they cause some damage when they leave? or they recruit other employees and start turnover contagion when they leave. What leads, what predicts whether employees quit in positive ways or quit or negative ways? It's how they feel that they were treated by their organization during their time. My, my research shows that when employees feel like they were underinvested in by their company, they tend to resign in more negative ways like I just described. And so uh, it's really important in this period of elevated resignations and even as those go down, that organizations realize that, you know, rolling back, if, if you have to roll back some of these benefits, uh, this flexible working, really make sure you're communicating with your employees the business reasons for doing it, explaining the, the, the justice behind the decision, as opposed to just deciding it. Otherwise, th that unfair treatment or perceptions of unfair treatment is just a big predictor of retaliatory behavior in employees.